it was quoted, uh, you were quoted to have said that um, the protest is going to start from the FCT and that's replying the um, CP of the FCT, that's the um, Commission of Police. So now, are you yes. actually stating that the, um, the protest is definitely going to start from here? I want to know if you actually made that before we continue. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we, we're just letting him know because there was a response to his claim that uh, FCT should not be a protest site uh, because uh, some roads have been tied in the city. And I had to respond to him very quickly that the uh, federal capital territory is where the people causing the problems are uh, situated and that the protests will start at uh, the federal, federal capital territory. And of course, everywhere across Nigeria, People are going to go to their state governors. Uh, people are going to go to various local uh, locations uh, across the world. It's going to involve embassies, uh, consulates, and wherever Nigeria might have a presence or concern, or even government houses, wherever in some places they may not have. Wherever you have Nigerians, we expect people to protest. So Abuja is definitely uh, number one on the list because. As I usually say, uh, it's the federal capital of the thieves that stole our destiny. Federal capital of the thieves that stole our destiny. I hear you loud and clear, Moya It looks like as though the promoters or the masterminders of the protest, they are, it, it, there's almost secrecy around it. Are you going to tell us at least, give us an exclusive, one or two persons that are one of the promoters or the bankrollers or the funders of this protest? hunger, starvation, poverty, election rigging, you know, a lot of lack of health care and employment. Those are the promoters of uh, this particular revolt. Wanting a revolution is a call for coup, which is also high treason. So I remember that um, you were accused for treasonable felonies in 2019, which lasted for over three years. You were not able to see your family and all. I hear some people say, okay, can Omoyeleshowere just allow old wounds to heal, make it just breathe. What do you say to such people? Well, if you are in Kenya two, three weeks ago, when the revolt started against the current uh, regime there, the way Bayo is sounding now was how the government was sounding. It's high treason and they sent police after that. But when they were confronted with people's power, all the demands that the people asked for have been met. We'll begin this conversation first taking a quote from Desmond Tutu, South African bishop and theologian. He once said, If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has its foot on the tail of a mouse and you say that you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. All right, my next one will be from Williams um, Faulkner, who is an American writer who once said that never be afraid to raise your voice for honesty and truth and compassion against injustice and lying or greed. If people all over the world would do this, it will change the earth. Absolutely spot on. My last quote will be from Buckminster Fuller. He is an American architect. He once said, you will never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Okay, now let's see how this quote relates to what we'll be discussing today. Very warm greetings and welcome to The Conversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Annabel Oji. As the clock ticks for the August 1st, 2024 nationwide protest against hunger and bad governance in Nigeria, fingers are pointing at the losers of the 2023 presidential elections as the masterminds behind the planned protest. The Labour Party has refuted claims made by the presidency that it is um, presidential flag bearer 
Peter Obi and his supporters that are behind the planned nationwide anti or anti government protest scheduled to hold on August 1st. The presidency described calls for the nationwide protest against hashtag Tinubu must go and revolution 2024 as treasonable. Now, my guest on the show today is Omo Yele a 2023 presidential um, candidate for AAC, and we'll be talking about the hashtag and bad governance. Hashtag revolution now. Hello, Molly. Omoyeli Showere. Good to have you on the show. Thank you for bringing me. Thank you so much. Great. Okay. So I will start first by asking because it's, there seems to be a list that has gone viral, and this um, list is ascribed to you. It reads, and quote, Showere name political stakeholders behind alleged plot to incite Nigerians to riot and some of the notable names mentioned include President Bola Ahmed Tinubu for alleged massive corruption, election rigging and harmful economic policies since May 29, 2023. Senate President Goswil Akwabio and House Speaker criticized for ineffectiveness. CBN Governor Yemi Kadoso accused for devaluing the Naira. IGP Kayode Egbetokun alleged to have reduced the police force to a corrupt institution. EFCC Chairman for allegedly aiding and abetting crime and corruption. Chief of Army Staff alleged collusion with bandits and terrorists. Chief of Navy Staff allegedly involved in crude oil theft. Comptroller General of Customs um, accused of allegedly aiding cross-border crimes and corruption judges allegedly um, accused for bribery to pervert justice and the INEC chairman criticized for organizing flawed election that brought forth corrupt officials kindly affirm or debunk that this um, post is from you Omoye Leshoware before we continue it is from me I, I oh. listed those individuals uh the list has grown up to 20 of them now who are the architects of the misery that's now provoking nigeria to uh, engage in a revolt what i meant by releasing their names was because had they not done what they did the mischief uh against and, and you know the conspiracy against nigerian people uh, nobody would probably at this time be thinking about a revolt but if you look at the hunger, the starvation, the corruption, the mismanagement, waste, and the wickedness that has become the order of governance in Nigeria, these are the individuals that are responsible for it. And it's to point people directly to them, as opposed to them pointing at others as, as instigating the public or inciting the public. So I wanted to put the blame firmly on their front doors uh, so that Nigerians can understand who their enemies are. Okay, so now that we are already sure that you made that post, but then I'll yes. ask you, um, you you also type on your um, uh, Twitter space or X saying revolution now, hashtag end bad governance on social media and all, but you're currently not in Nigeria. So if the protest eventually holds on August 1st or starts on August 1st, are you going to be on ground to join the protest or you will be mobilizing virtually? That's irrelevant. Uh, this is a thing that affects everybody in Nigeria. And I'm just one person uh, who has participated in more than 200 protests, both at home and abroad. And by the way, this protest is global uh, in nature. So anybody who is interested can participate anywhere, offline, online, virtually, whichever way you want to call it. But I don't want to pay minds to this particular question, because it is a question that uh, is relevant to where we're headed, which is to liberate our country from wherever we might find ourselves. So that's that's my answer. Okay, so because I we, the reason why I asked that question, because most people will tell you that he's abroad, but he's asking us to revolt. Same thing, politicians, they'll ask you to revolt or they ask you to go, um, they send you to become, to become thugs, but then their children, are not amongst those people that they send to those election rigging and all, which you have also uh, protested against. That's why I asked the question. Uh, you're not knowing me for the first time. I came back to Nigeria in July of 2019 to lead revolution now. And I was arrested 
detained for months and restricted to Nigeria for five years. I was protesting even under restriction, you know. Uh, so you are aware of all these things. So why is it relevant? You can, those questions are relevant to people who take advantage of people, others, not me. I, I have been protesting since 1989 when I entered the University of Lagos against the military. So what I'm saying is that why don't we talk about substance and the uh, labor side, government, <clears throat> and the uh, agent argument as to where somebody will be. All right, so now coming from the presidency, they say, um, the presidency says, and quote, those that are involved in masterminding the protest are those that lost woefully during the 2023 elections. Are they referring to you? Sure. Again, that's uh, something that I don't even think makes sense. Everybody's a loser in Nigeria today because of the kind of governance we have in place. The people who are hungry, including people who voted for them, who voted for the APC, they are all losers. If you're in a society where things don't work, where you don't have electricity, you have no food, you have no jobs, you have no access to healthcare, you're a loser. And people are tired of being called losers. So they want progress. And that's what we're about. Uh, not, uh, you know, if, if you win an election and uh, you don't, you don't perform. You put incompetent and corrupt people in place. You are the loser. You are the, you are the one who actually is a, who should be referred to as a loser. Someone who is giving authority to govern, who is governed. That's a real loser. Not people who are asking you to do what you're elected to do. All right. So when you look at the planned protest from August 1st, do you see... Um, a reform or at least a, an update of what happened in August 20, 2020? No, well, well, I, I imagine you're referring to October 2020, which is SARS, yeah, that was October. Uh, we October, I would pardon. imagine that a lot of Nigerians would come out and ensure that uh, they overwhelm their oppressors to the point that the oppressors should have no any other alternative than to either surrender or flee. That is that is the nature and character of the protest that has been planned. Uh, what he did in 2020 is to arm protests, send SUVs in Abuja with security agents to start attacking people, move people from Kassina and Kaduna to attack innocent protesters. And then when that didn't work, they sent the army to the toll gate to kill innocent protesters. That would not be acceptable and tolerated this time around. And then, and I think they've gotten that memo already. So, uh, because uh, they can't keep holding Nigerians for ransom forever. At the point, people are going to break free. And I imagine we're getting close to that period now. All right. When you hear um, people like President Bola Ame Tinubu, and then some other religious and traditional rulers ask Nigerians not to go forth with that protest. Does that, by any means, is, is it going to deter people or people are still willing to move regardless? No, they've been bribing religious leaders for, and they have never stopped people from moving against the government. When we were students, they used to boss or fly religious leaders to Abuja during the military era, show them videos, and they'll come out, of course, after having been bribed and say, oh, you know, we see the reason why the election was annulled. We now know why people are being framed for coup plotting. This is not new. Uh, it, the, the truth is that one of the reasons why Nigerians are very determined to revolt this time is that they are also tired of the lies they have been told from the pulpits, from churches and mosques and whatever religious places across the country. And they know that most of the traditional rulers <coughs> have sold themselves, uh, sold their soul to, to the government because of a filthy looker. And, uh, but this is not the first time it happened in the history of mankind. So many people who end up, ended up as slaves today were sold out by their religious and uh, traditional rulers.
in history. So let them keep doing what they know how to do best. The people will do what is needed and necessary. So. All right. So wait, you actually talked about the fact that during the NSAS protest, um, you talked about how it was infiltrated and all of that. So this morning, um, um, headline, I saw where it was quoted, uh, you were quoted to have said that um, the protest is going to start from the FCT and that's replying the um, CP of the FCT, that's the um, Commission of Police. So now, are you yes. actually stating that the, um, the protest is definitely going to start from here? I want to know if you actually made that before we continue. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, we, we're just letting him know because it was a response to his claim that uh, FCT should not be a protest site uh, because uh, some roads have been tied in the city and I had to respond to him very quickly that the uh, federal capital territory is where the people causing the problems are situated and that the protests will start uh, at the federal, federal capital territory. And of course, everywhere across Nigeria, people are going to go to their state governors, uh, people are going to go to various local, uh, locations uh, across the world. It's going to involve embassies, uh, consulates, and wherever Nigeria might have a presence or concern, or even government houses, wherever, in some places they may not have. Wherever you have Nigerians, we expect people to protest. So Abuja is definitely uh, number one on the list because, as I usually say, uh, it's the federal capital of the thieves that stole our destiny. Federal capital of the thieves that stole our destiny. I hear you loud and clear, Mori Alicia. Oh, no, there's this, um, it looks like as though the promoters or the masterminders of the protest, they are, it, it, there's almost secrecy around it. So are you going to tell us at least, give us an exclusive, one or two persons that are one of the promoters or the bankrollers or the funders of this protest? Hunger, starvation, poverty, election rigging. You know, a lot of lack of health care and employment. Those are the promoters of uh, this particular revolt. Okay, so now no, let me quote. No All right. Beneath um, your ex post you made, you asked people to also add um, their. You said, and quote, but we are not rioting. We just want a revolution, no going back. And according to the presidential aide, that's Bayo Ononuga, he said, and quote, if they understand the meaning of the hashtags, they will realize that they are making a clarion call for treason, wanting to end elected government or government in high, is high treason. Wanting a revolution is a call for coup, which is also high treason. So, I remember that um, you were accused for treasonable felonies in 2019, which lasted for over three years. You were not able to see your family and all. I hear some people say, okay, can Omoyele Showeri just allow old wounds to heal? Make it just breathe. What do you say to such people? Well, if you were in Kenya two, three weeks ago, when the revolt started against the current uh, regime there, the way bio is sounding now was how the government was saying it's high treason and they sent police after that but when they were confronted with people's power all the demands that the people asked for have been met and the people of kenya the young people of kenya are still saying no and they want more they want the president of kenya to resign with his cabinet and his, his entire uh, group so people's power has a uh, overriding power over all these reckless uh statements of high treason. That was the same thing they said in 2019 that I was committed treason. When we got to court, they couldn't prove it for five years and they had to go back to court and withdraw their charges. And that's how I left. And I predicted that. But it's not gonna there's no treason trial that can end the desire for Nigerians to be free. So you know, they are throwing uh, the usual familiar disgraceful parts. And Bayer should know better because uh, he was a journalist in the country who was practicing 
guerrilla journalism when he was still in you know the the, the publisher of uh, a number of tabloids, uh, the News Tempo, and the number of uh, PM News in those days, and uh, he uh, he was accused of treason too. So I can't believe that uh, this is same bio <laughs> you know. But uh, like I said somewhere yesterday, we're trying to save Nigeria, save them too from themselves. Mm. All right, because you mentioned Kenya. Now, if you go to, it looks like there's this wind or this era of protest ongoing. You talk about Kenya, you go to Uganda, you go to Bangladesh, and now to Nigeria. Yeah. Is that even a, a means to an end? Sure. It is up to the Nigerian people, all oppressed people around the world, to determine what is the means to an end and when to end a means. So it's not something that can just be casually discussed and dismissed. It is the people who are feeling the pain and the pang and you know and this, and, and you know and, and that is inflicted on them by these people and their policies that can tell you how bad they feel when you wake up in the morning, you don't have a job, you don't know where your next meal is coming from when you're sick, you can't uh find medicine or Medicare. You know, we paid a wage that cannot even buy you a bag of rice. You can't pay your rent. You have no electricity. You have no prospects. You can't go on vacation. You can't send your children to schools. You're not safe in the neighborhood where you found yourself or where the government puts you. It is you who know what you're going through that can see for sure uh, what will be best for you. You know, sometimes. Uh, people do everything to free themselves and sometimes they lose their life in the process that the next generation will not have to go through this kind of pain and hardship uh, that is just deliberately inflicted on the people of Nigeria. And in our own case, it's lasted for too long, uh, 64 years now since we had the so-called independence. So it's time to end the contract with pain. If you say it is time to end the contract with pain, now how much will an August 1st attend protest stop bad governors, really? Stop corrupt um, leaders? Stop or take um, make the food insecurity, at least abate the uh, or ameliorate the situation in Nigeria? How much will, at the end of this protest, sure, are you optimistic that it will lead to anything or we're back to square one? Well, I'm very optimistic. If it's done right, uh, we will not be back to square one, you know. Um, but if we are back to square one, that's uh, progress because we have always been at square zero. All right, then. Let's move over to other stories. And then um, would, I, was, I was going to ask you with regards to, um, let's move straight to um, the U.S. presidential election with um, Biden uh, deciding to, drop from the presidential race and all and there's this call for Kamala Harris to become the next US president what are your thoughts in this regard let's start from there the only thought I have about it is relative to Nigeria you know and I tweeted about it because I knew they would force Biden out of the race the moment he came out of that very disastrous debate with Donald Trump I tweeted about it and making an analogy between the U.S. that if what we saw during our election and since the current president Nigeria came to power, if he was in the U.S., it would have forced him to step down by now. You know, falling over at events, being incoherent, and then you combine that with some of the worst possible policies uh, in the world, in any part of the world, it would have forced him. You know, or if they have conscience, they might well have just resigned and left Nigeria to figure out his future, you see. So that's that's what serious people do when they when they have people who are incompetent or people who are dealing with very clearly uh cognitive issues or physically or mentally. But in Nigeria you have a combination of all of that at every level of government. We keep saying, oh, a spray. You know and Nigeria is uh, an example that prayers don't work. 
Did you just say that prayers don't work? Sure. Let Nigeria is an example that prayers don't work, yes. I say, I'm saying that to you. If prayers worked, Nigeria would be El Dorado. It would be paradise. So you... I've never seen that number of prayer matchings in my life. You know, as many as we have in Nigeria. Everything they pray, every moment they pray in the morning, they pray before work, they pray during work. They even hold services, you know, during work hours. Some people go to church Monday to Friday, mosque. Friday, you know, people pray five times a day. Look at it. There's something. Is that right that prayers don't work? Or we are praying on the wrong side of God. <laughs> Maybe we are praying on the side that God doesn't receive signal from. <laughs> Goodness me. <laughs>
the IMF was more concerned about reducing the number of universities in Nigeria. It led to one of the biggest revolts by students in those days, and it was called the anti sap riots of 1989. I already been offered admission and that I had an entire investment I was going to you know like a lot of them participated in one of those protests. The schools that they said they should not fund in 1989 are the same schools that have produced the doctors and nurses that they are now snatching away from us when COVID came, when they had this uh, COVID issue. So what does that tell you? Had we invested more in education, more in public services, we would be doing better than them now because we have enough doctors and nurses, we have enough electricity, we have public water, we would have you know, education that is free and affordable uh, to our people. And we'll just be living a better life. There's no question about it. We'll look at all the policies over these years. We'll see what it has done to us. And that is why, apart from just making sure that we take all these toxic loans, you know, with heavy overhead costs that goes back to them and their consultants, they also ensure that you're not able to pay back the loan so that they can keep dictating to you uh, economic policies they know would never let you make progress. So would you actually say that some of the policies reeled out by the federal government or this administration, are they trial and error? It's, it's, it's more than trial and error because somebody waking up on the day he's sworn in as Nigeria's president, who says to you, I'm, really, I'm, re I'm, I'm removing subsidy without any studies undertaking to show what the impact will be on your people. 200 million people. And you know that Nigerians are likely operating within a sector, uh, an economic system that is informal. What it means is that a lot of people have to go out on a daily basis and find something to scavenge on, you know. So that's why if you're driving around neighborhoods around Nigeria, almost all around Nigeria, everybody has a store in front of their house so that's selling fish or selling yam because that's how people survive you know even those who have daily jobs must still sell something on the side water you know uh soda uh, what you call minerals in nigeria for you to survive so the moment you jack up the prices of goods and service i mean uh, of uh, petroleum resource and uh, petroleum then you have only whatever is left of the ability to get a little bit of cushion to carry out their daily lives and you know it has immediate impact you know it, it goes as far as affecting your rent you know it's not only transportation everybody increases their price based on that and then you do another terrible policy monetary policy monetary suicide you float your currency where you know that whatever comes into nigeria nigeria doesn't produce much so and if you add that to the cost of doing business in nigeria Without it, that's why a lot of factories are closing down. Because don't forget that the lie they have been telling you about subsidy is that anytime they remove subsidy, they will invest the subsidy, the, the gains in social services. But you ask me, what happened to the gains they have made from the removal of subsidy from diesel? Because diesel is not subsidized, jet A1 fuel is not subsidized. A lot of petroleum products in Nigeria are not subsidized. They're not. What did we gain from that? And since the subsidy was removed <clears throat> last year, May, what has Nigerians gained from the removal of subsidy? They will show you a pamphlet of how governors get paid every month at allocations, right? But everybody knows that the moment the governor gets allocated a certain amount of money, he converts it to dollars and move it out of the country. The rest is wasted and irrelevant things, you know, uh, private jets hiring, attending to things that have, and then security boats that help them steal whatever is left. 
All right. So I hear you loud and clear with regards to fuel subsidy. You talked about structural adjustment programs. So I'm sure that you are among those who believe that structural adjustment program is part, in fact, one of Nigeria's biggest challenge. It started from there. Now, because you talked about fuel subsidy, let's move straight to Nigeria's energy sector with um, uh, Dan Gote making some allegations with regards to um, his refinery. I've seen quite a number of posts or statements or reports where he has made some very daring statements. And then he stated that some NNPC guys, uh, they have their plants, their blending plant in Malta. And then he was um, fingering the NNPC's GMD. What are your thoughts in this regard? Most people would say that they're just trying to stifle the refinery why he's saying that his friends are even laughing at him for um investing in nigeria even some people do not agree are you in line with this or in tune with this you know the interesting part is that uh, <laughs> nigeria is such an interesting paradox it uh, has failed the poor now it started to fail the rich in fact it's failing those who has failed it and the reason I say this is that who would ever think that Dangote will become an activist overnight, quote unquote, because his own interest was uh, at stake. The refinery that he built was built almost by Nigeria. You know, they gave him all kinds of waivers. He got a special rate for currency the dollar to narrate to special to him and uh, eventually they're saying that the refinery is not even completed and this is nothing new i have been saying this that this is all a fraud and what will shock you is that when these guys were building refineries or when i asked the nigerian states to steal business and they said they're capitalists and that they have, they have capital to you know build refineries and run it sufficiently. The same people are turning around a few years later and say, oh, we want to sell the refinery to you if you want it. So they now want Nigerian states to, to buy the refinery. But what I'm trying to say is that it's the same people who have made it impossible for the refineries to, the federally owned refineries to work uh, that are now crying out that uh, they have been stifled. So, if Dangote wasn't having problem with Nigerian government, I'm sure by now he would have people asking people not to protest. That things will be all right. So, you see where we are, but we have always considered this, this brazen, crony uh, capitalism that they do. It's not good for anybody. And now well, it has caught up with them. The lies they've told that, you know, Capitalism is the best system of uh, economic uh, progress has been exposed because they're not actually not, they're not capitalists in the sense of it. These guys are just renters, rent seekers, and their biggest business is government. That's why they're always interested in who becomes Nigerian president, donate a huge amount of money to them, help them to get to power so that they can control the levels of economic power, uh, you know, uh, as as a system, so there's nothing new uh, about uh, Dangote crying out. It was going to happen, so this is going. This is going full circle now, 360 degrees. Hmm. So I hear you say that um, they are interested to know who will become Nigeria's next president and donate money to them. Did they do that to you, Shore, when you were contesting? I, I, you know, I don't speak their language. I don't belong to their class, and you know we have mutual uh, hatred for ourselves because I don't want to be part of anybody who's cheating the people. So they don't, they don't even call me to such meetings where they make donations. So, hmm. so when you walk around the FCT, you you just see um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's. Um, uh, banners and posters um, strategically placed and they're asking for 2027 we go again uh, definitely i'm sure he's he might not be the one that um, organized or 
uh, it could be supporters uh, that are putting up those um, banners. So in 2024, we are already talking about 2027 election. What is going on here? It's because they, they understand Nigerians that people have been popularized to the point that, you know, you can insult them whenever you want, with whatever. You can put an insult on the billboard for Nigerians and they'll still go and stand on that it and spread you. So uh, that's what happens when you completely move uh, your citizenry and you engage in what is uh, globally known as state capture, when you capture every part of the state, you know, security agencies, banks and all that. So you should, that's what you should expect. It's, it's expected that, you know, they can do whatever they want. So otherwise, there's nobody who would have had the front to be talking about elections when already a year and a few months of uh, your being in power has already crippled your economy and your people. Oh, thank you, loud and clear. Now let's move straight to talk about other matters with regards to um, business. I hear you talk, say that um, most of the people who um, who were uh, you, in fact, you, you, you mentioned, I will quote you, you said some of the people who ensure that the federal government's refinery don't work are the people that are now complaining. Are you referring to Dangote as some of the people who stifled the refineries? You remember uh, that there was a time that the refineries were sold to Dangote. I think it was Port Harcourt refinery and another one. And then that was under Bassinger. And then when Yaradua came, he passed his sales. So ever since then, uh, every effort has been made to ensure those refineries don't work. Um, and he now went and built his own refinery using resources that belong to Nigeria state. As a matter of fact, the government of Nigeria invested over 2.7 billion dollars in his refinery and um, they also went ahead and commissioned the refinery the same government turns around i'm talking about the same political party because this is apc now they turned around a few months after the refinery was commissioned the refinery was commissioned without producing a single drop of petroleum product and then they come around and tell you after it's refined that the the refinery that they commissioned is not licensed. And it's only for the 5% you know, complete. I mean, what fraud is greater than this in, in human history? If this is not fraud, then what is fraud? All right, so let's talk about the new minimum wage. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu sends the bill to the National Assembly, and I hear the former Senate, uh, the chief whip, say that um, 70,000 Naira can only buy you a bag of rice. So are you, what do you think with regards to the 70,000 Naira minimum wage, even though some governors have refused to pay the 30,000 Naira, now we're talking 70,000 Naira. Is, there, is it anything to go by with yeah. all that is happening, the current hardship or the current situation, the, the mood of Nigerians? Just do the arithmetic. When the Naira was, when minimum wage was 18,000 Naira in 2014, 2015, I think, um, the Naira was exchanging at 360 Naira to a dollar. Are you getting my point? Yes. And then when it was increased in 2019 to 30,000, the Naira had moved from 360 to about 460. Uh, so there's no minimum wage increase in terms of value of Naira to the dollar, which is uh, the how we measure the strength of the Nigerian currency. What has actually happened is that yeah, what Nigerian workers are earning less now than they were earning in 2015. That's what has happened. 
So it is the reason we made it very clear that for this to be called an increase in minimum wage, there must you must think about it in terms of what is all about. And that's why the least amount of minimum wage that was acceptable was the 250,000 Naira, which was the proposal that I made when I was campaigning in 20, um, 20, 2022, 2023. So there's no increase in minimum wage because the minimum wage of 2015, 18,000 Naira, would actually buy you a bunch of probably will open a rice shop for you. You can buy it because I think a bag of rice was 3,000 naira at that time. So with 18,000 naira, you can buy a bunch of bags of rice and be selling. You can open a shop. Today, 70,000 naira minimum wage can only buy you one bag of rice with plenty of uh, sand and stones in it. If you want to buy the superior ones, you probably have to pay more. So what are we talking about? So if I, if I take home 70,000 as minimum wage um, and I buy a bag of rice, how about transportation? How about medicine? How do I pay rent? How do I survive? So these are very simple things to look at. And when you hear people jubilating over this, then you start asking yourself, what's wrong with our people? Including, uh, particularly the labor leaders who went in there and they were doing BUSA for the president. And it is because labor leaders or labor bureaucrats who were doing BUSA, you know, earn minimum wage. They're probably on maximum wage. You know, the rich is obvious. If they earn minimum wage, they would never have gone into that meeting saying BUSA. You know, that's disgraceful chant of BUSA for present. Grown men, you know. <laughs> We're just there deceiving themselves and selling their colleagues in the workforce down the toilet. It's so sad. All right, even as we begin to round off, we've talked about the minimum wage, we've talked about um, businesses being stifled, the precipitous decline of our national currencies compared to other global currencies, which are, and all of these things are what. Nigerians are complaining about. That's the reason why they're hitting the streets to protest. In the long run, do you see this um, like what happened in Kenya or is it going to look like what is happening in Uganda where the president is saying, don't go out or you would face real restrictions. That's what the presidency is saying. What are your thoughts on all of this? Even as we look forward to no, no, I've been through, I've been through, I've been through seven presidents in my lifetime. You know, I think two of them were hardcore military guys, and they've always been beaten to submission when people rise up. It was the people that forced Babangida into retirement in 1993. It was the efforts of the people that ended the Abacha regime. You know, some I say he died, uh, so those are natural causes, but we never stopped fighting him before he died. It was people that stopped Obasanjo from having a third term, you know, and uh, so the people have always outlasted their tormentors in this country, and the Tinubu regime will not be uh, the last, but they might be the first to have a strong taste of resistance that you may not have seen in a while in Nigeria, going by their own particular uh, intoxication with power and arrogance. Now, speaking of which, we saw the bill, the National Assembly actually proposed a bill to have um, the, so that the presidency can spend at least six years for one term. And, and then some people are even saying that four years, we're still complaining. And then you're thinking of six years for one term. If I'm going to, let me play the devil's advocate. Would you actually accept such bill, especially if you have become the president? Does that look good to you? It is the reason why one of our cardinal demands is for the people to make the constitution for themselves. It is the reason why they're doing all this nonsense. It's because the 1999 constitution 
allows them to do all kinds of tinkering. If the concession was made by the people and through proper and legitimate concessional making process, and went through a referendum, you can't just come out there, we want to think out with it whenever we like. So, and people will resist. That's why we're asking for the 1999 constitution and whatever amendments now that went through uh, to be tossed out, you know, to be scrapped completely. All right. Mm -hmm. Now we'll finally let you go. Thank you so much. It's been a wonderful time. But before, lastly, before I let you go, I know I, 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 I was going to ask you this question, but it was almost leaving my mind. Since we already seen some other presidential candidates um, drop their posters around, are we going to be seeing yours anytime soon? Maybe for AAC or another party, sure. No. Uh, are you done on The task at hand is liberation. And that is the focus. Nothing but the task of liberating a Nigerian country for now. That's what it, that's that's the only poster you see from me. Twenty twenty three AAC presidential candidate. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your time with us. Thank you for bringing me. Thank you. Right, viewers, that's where we end this conversation for today. We have been chatting with Omoye Lesho who is the 2023 presidential candidate for AAC, and it's been a wonderful time here on the conversation. Whatever you do, ensure that you stay safe, even if you're going out to protest, ensure that you stay safe. From all of us here on, at Captain Television, we wish you all the best and we say thank you for watching. My name is Annabel Oji. God bless you and yours, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Good morning.